Hello, everybody. This is Dissonant Waves. Yeah, we're all here this time. Technically episode 9, but also episode 8. And a kind of a recap of our Lost Mini episode. Yeah. The real episode um, 8 was lost as well. Yeah, it's, enti- so it's entirely my fault, I think. I take full responsibility. Yeah, that. We don't have to cast blame anywhere. But just for the listeners to know, we've had some issues on our end. We're going to try to get it all caught up in this episode. So we're going to try to move through things, but it might be a little bit longer than normal. I'll be uploading the mini-side the day after that we're recording right now. And so last week's mini-side, Trix wasn't there. Kind of yeah, I was bit. passed out on the couch. Kind of covered a bit of the lost thing, but yeah, we have a lot of just lost material right now. Not the best start, but better to fuck up this early instead of very, very late. Yeah. So we're yeah. going to kind of be quickly recapping episode 8, probably spend around 10 to 15 minutes just recapping it, because right. what makes this podcast kind of great is that we kind of are... We do talk a bit with each other about the albums throughout the week, but we mostly give the unfiltered opinions kind of just straight in the podcast. There's no rehearsing or anything. We just go straight into it. And it kind of feels weird if we were just to fake the surprise of like of how we say everything for an hour and 30 minutes because then we're all just reacting like, oh, I haven't heard that before when I really have. And it was just... Uh... Yeah. Oh, so Trix is driving again, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm driving right now. Yeah, I'm always driving when I'm recording for some reason. Trix is the name. Speed is their game. I'm going about 30 miles per hour, about 45 kilometers. Uh, uh, I'm not really going that fast. Give us a play-by-play of everything you see. <laughs> uh, I'm next to a school bus and a national grid truck at a red light. Right next to P3 and a hospital. All right. Sounds like a really good picture of America. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. So we get into the episode 8 recap here, and then we kind of just go straight into episode 9, or a bit of Trix's rankings as well. I think, and I think is... Trix should just do the highlights first, perhaps, just to get that out there. Yeah, just saying. my ranking highlights. I was going to delay I'll, the I'll, I'll, just, I'll, give, I'll but... give the... I'll give the lowlights. I can do that while driving. No big deal. Right. I'll give the lowlights and the highlights. Low light, lowlights for me were just like uh, Devin Townsend, LSD. I just didn't really like click with those albums really too much at all. Uh, like I thought LSD was all right. I would actually place it a little higher than Devin Townsend, but wow. still, <laughs> yeah, dude. Devin Townsend just eh. So does that mean Devin me Townsend off. is your least favorite overall, or is that going to bag rest? Overall, yeah. It's, overall, oh. I'd say Devin Townsend is my least favorite. Not you put Janelle Monáe. So I, 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 put, I would put Janelle Monáe in my top ten. Wow. I didn't, you were pretty harsh on that, I remember. No, I was the one who was the no, harshest I, I, on I, Yeah, I, I ranked that one a number two. Okay, fair enough. Well, so did I, but like, I was probably the harshest on it. Yeah. I, I quite like Janelle Monet. Perfectly fine. That's great. Um, and then the highlights, obviously, in the airplane over the sea. Uh, and uh, fucking Middle East was really good. Again, Middle East, uh, I'm the only one who doesn't have it in the top three. Yeah. Well, no, yours is, is yours, isn't yours number three? No, because I, okay. I have Sticky Fingers Line of Pleasure as number two. Has it changed? Okay. We've changed. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I, well, I, 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 I explained a bit. So, uh, obviously, Sticky Fingers Light of Pleasure is one of the albums in this week. It's a bit spoiled from the mini so because I didn't realize that uh, that episode 8 was lost. But, yeah. How, yeah. Many, uh, how many of these acts do you generally think you would buy or listen to in your own time? Uh, a good number of them, actually. Like, uh... I, I, I like late earlier in this week. Uh, what was, I was listening to um, something off of this podcast that one of you guys recommended. Let me go back through my uh, Google Play recently and listen to. Um, that's the best part about Google Play. Uh, I was talking about uh, in the mini set how I've been listening to a lot of the uh, Diarrhea Planet album, which was 
probably oh, Diary the, Plan's great. Yeah, which is probably the biggest surprise that I've had from this whole podcast. Uh, Aeroplane. Oh. Fair enough. Did yeah, you listen to it in stereo? Um, Aeroplane's not a surprise, though. Uh, recordings in the Middle East and listening to. Um, I got, I got uh, Taco Cat in my recents. BTS um, update? No BTS update uh, other than just hating on K-pop with one of my friends in a, in a text message last night. So you, Riddle, I'm... and you were telling me to listen to Last Dinosaurs again. Yep. But when I thought about Last Dinosaurs, all I could think about was Hot Flash Heat Wave. I really do not see the similarities between those two albums, though. I don't know either. It's just that there's, there's whenever no... I think of a song, it's like, there's... nope, that's not the right song. There's no similarity when you listen to the sounds like you have to just forget about everything and just go back and listen to the last dinosaurs again that's oh. how I say to do it I but... feel like the hesitation for whatever reason hesitation is a great goddamn song and I'll stand by that I agree but that's this, a good song there's good songs off the Hot Flash Heatwave album like it's well executed but it's just oh gutter girl did not like gutter girl I think Malibu's the best um... of it because it's a crime to kill my vibe. Oh, yeah. yeah. Alright, well, that's kind of the gist, I think. Um, yeah. For not having a list in front of me, that's pretty good, I think. Uh, eight a bit. Episode 8 was a bit yes. of a struggle in some ways, because we got really deep into Crystal Castle's stuff. Yeah. Stuff like that happened. Uh, to recap, um, Alice Glass accused her bandmate Ethan Kath of credible abuse of all sorts, sexual, physical. I, it makes me feel really guilty coming back to Crystal Castles. And, you know, I struggled with that while listening to the album over and over. And, like, did I make the right choice to bring it on the podcast? All that stuff. And, you know, it's a difficult decision. And,. Like for the music, I like obviously I appreciated having it on the podcast, but like I support Alice. I you know appreciate the music for what it is, but it's not a replacement for you know what could have been. There, there is one thing I would like to say about like the whole um, uh, thing about just feeling weird about putting stuff on the podcast. Um, I've, I've always held the opinion that if you put anybody under a microscope, you're going to find stuff you're not going to like. Yeah, that's so, granted, absolutely true. I mean, if you go back granted, to any of our history, you, you'll probably find something that we did wrong once in our lifetimes. Granted, that's oh, completely yeah. different to, you know, the allegations that Atlas Class does. Yeah. Say, say back when I was a kid, like, I'm an edgy kid, so I probably said some racist shit back when I, back when I was eight. Oh, who hasn't? Yeah, but and that, you don't really compare that to even Carve's, you know, I, I know, but what I'm going to do is, yeah. but yeah, but they're, like classic rockers is what it's coming into mind because like there's a lot of stuff about like Jimmy Page. He married a 14 year old just so he could fuck her, really. Yeah, yeah. I don't know it just for me because that was such a huge band for me. That was a real big blow, and that's probably most of why I feel so guilty. Back at the album, it really wasn't as great as I remembered, which was like the most surprising thing. Like it's a fine album, but. A lot of it doesn't flow. There's too many songs. Some of it could have been cut. Like, I re- there's a really good EP mixed in with that LP. Yeah, I believe. Uh, Spanish is really cool. Me and Trust Us is really cool. We didn't really give too much shits about the controversy going into the album. We both kind of just found it overrated from what I can remember. Yeah, I don't really like the album. Vanished was a good song, but I really only enjoyed that because I like Vanshee. I like Excuse Me and Alice Practice. Alice Practice, of course, being one of the huge points of the allegations that it was a mistake and it clearly was not. But I'd say Alice like, Practice is the only song off there that's I consider a good song. That's not just a remix. Like all of the that was the thing about the album. It was mostly just a remix album of other songs and. I, I, compared to the artist that I'm bringing in next week, it, it didn't sound like they were making all the time that they were making these songs their own. It just sounded like a bunch of remixes. It's not that that's bad. It's just that it was only the only things that stood out. 
like untrust us the crystal is, castle song is well, you know big stretch untrust us which is the remix of the uh death from above kind of sample pretty much uh you had crime rave which is a remix of the health and as much as i don't and like I mean, crime there... rave it stood out there, there are artists that have made a complete living off of just using samples, like Daft yeah, Punk. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not that it's a bad thing. I'm, I'm not trying to point no. it out. I'm just saying that one of my other notes is that I didn't really see it all as much as I'm listening to Crystal Castles. It was more I'm listening to just a bunch of remixes. It's not, it's not, it's yeah, I mean, like... there, there were some artists in Australia who are absolutely big with remixes. I mean, you've heard of Flume overseas, obviously. He's done so many remixes over here, it's so funny. And some of them are fucking amazing. One, one of the things I would like to say about Daft Punk, because I don't know if I'll have another opportunity to talk about them again, because I like their music, but I don't know if it's worth bringing on the podcast, is uh, the, the song uh, Robot Rock ah, is yes. literally is literally completely sampled, except for the Robot Rock from the song Release the Beast by Breakwater. Oh, okay. That's like legit give out. give that a listen. It's release the beast, but with just like some funk on it. It's the songs that sound like other songs in a minute. <laughs> but um that's like I think it's Crystal Castles in a nutshell, basically, yeah. yeah? Uh, scary next. No, we'll do the Taco Cat because Taco Cat was kind of uh rated the middle. Because Crystal Castles were kind of all rated rated last in the end. I think you put it above Taco Cat, but yeah, yeah, just because of nostalgia. Yeah. So we'll go Taco with Taco Cat. Cat. Uh, Taco Cat, uh, I just kind of discovered and I fucking loved them. And uh, yeah, they were just a lot of fun. They're just a fun band. Yeah, actually, uh, the CD for that album came the other day, which is nice. Oh, yeah, was the uh, last song super long on it? Yep. Or? Seven minutes. Really? Yep. Oh, dick. So you might have to rip that for us. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, it's probably just a hidden track. I haven't actually listened to the seven minute one yet, though, but there's probably a hidden track on that. Oh, wait, I'm really curious what that is. Me too. So I, I, the, I've been debating picking up the vinyl. Uh, I picked up a couple uh, CDs as well. The only other one, though, that's really of note from that is I picked up the Adult Mom on CD as well. That, that's a good one. That is a good one. I'm trying to see what it's got there. I've also got the uh, absolute angst of uh, Sunny Deal Real Estate, so um, anyone who wants to become emo with me, just give me a call. I got, I've got, <laughs> I've got the only album you'll need. Bring hello emo. Yes, I scream for fifty minutes. Yep, that's there's all. A, there's a fucking um, emergency stop button on one of the machines at my job. Uh, it just says emo on it, and I have no idea why, but all I ever think of is just fucking emo music whenever I see it. It's button to emo. <laughs> Press bu- button to stop all the emo in the world. Anyway, Taco Cat. Um, I like their messaging. You know, a feminist punk band is really cool with some surf rock in there. You know, it didn't really annoy me until you pointed this out, but now it's kind of started to bother me, is you pointed out how in the majority of their songs, they start off with the one, two, three count, like one, two, three, four count, or the drumstick count, and yeah, that is starting to get a little bothering me on the album. (laughs) I noticed the first listen is like, which, how many times have they done this song? Like four? Like, because it doesn't really... I'm going to be honest, I didn't, I haven't noticed it, but then again, I come from a musical background, I do bands. I was in bands and shit, and like um, every song, you just count off one, two, three, and go. Yeah, they probably count a lot of that though. Yeah, but uh, it, it it adds something to if you're like familiar with the environment, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I was appreciating that they had a song about Dana Catherine Scully. I don't. I've not watched the X Files, but I can appreciate. Like that kind of dedication. Oh yeah. It was talk because it had like a Cloud Atlas ref- reference. I'm pretty sure. Um, I would say anyone. Nice one. Really the Sonic Adventure one. Uh, so the Sonic internet, Adventure. which I I gave a good write up as to why I like that song. 
Yeah, uh, like Darius Hong. I wasn't too fond of the internet, but yeah. Well, uh, I the way I listen to it, uh, I I figured out why I like it is because it feels like it's more direct. That like the internet trolls or the the people getting bullied rather than the because uh, it's like reassuring, like uh, yeah, they're garbage. Don't listen to them. That sort of thing. Yeah. Just a little reassurance. Every everybody needs that sometimes. It was a fun short album. I mean, going on to it, it's everything that we talked about. I think we went on like a spiel about something else for fifteen minutes while we're talking about it anyway, because it is a pretty, a pretty consistent album. I feel like it doesn't take as much risks as it probably could. There's a lot. Of, I mean, we're going into this having already reviewed it, and now we're doing like a, two weeks later having a bit of a talk about it. And I don't like it as much, but I still like it. That makes sense. Yeah, I like the spirit of a lot of the songs, yeah. like, and that explains them to me. And you can't fire me, I quit. Yeah, but there's a couple of I, I will, things I will, I just noticed. It's like, oh uh, shit. I will say there are a full length album, um, which was, uh, take, was that? No, that wasn't Taking It to Your Dealer. I forget what it was exactly. Um, but that one did have a little bit more experimental on it. Uh, like at one point, um, there's a song called Psychedelic Quinceanera where there's horns. Uh, horns. Yeah, uh, I'm, I might have to do that one for, for the horns. But yeah, it's, per, it's a pretty solid album overall, too. And it, I think it takes a little bit more risks, which is funny because it came before it. Well, I mean, you know, they, they set out to make something and you make make something that's entirely kind of different from what you planned on. So maybe this was just like a album that they wanted to make and it was different from their experimental stuff. Yeah. I think, you know, we'll talk about a little more of that with Plush. Yeah, definitely. Is that Taco Cat? Yeah, again, it's, it was a pretty short one to talk about. It also helps that they didn't have that kind of same sexual assault allegations against them. That really, and... that really shortened down the chat. <laughs> and, you know... Oh, and they did the theme song for the new Powerful Girls. We found yeah, that, that was too. cool. Hopefully they're not shitty like Ethan Kath, because fuck Ethan Kath. Oh, wait, big scary animal. Yeah, I listened to this album a couple Perfect. more times, and I gotta say, I, I really enjoyed it. Like, I didn't end up listening to it all that much the first first time, because I, I was going through, like, a bit of a rough patch. And, uh, yeah, just a bit depressing for me, but I, I did enjoy it. And after listening to it again, I really, really enjoyed it. It's really something. Plus, like, I mean, there's, there's a couple of tunes of that while you're going through a rough patch where you've make everything worse or you would just like cling on to the tunes yeah mostly in the uh the sleeping section so a quick rundown there's there's four sections to it it was hunting lurking uh sleeping and waking which is how the album was done uh i've actually picked up the final since since we've done that recording i haven't listened to it yet so i can't i haven't actually opened it yet so i unfortunately can't tell you uh, I'll show you pictures of the LP and how it's not numbered, but uh, if I can remember, I was pretty pretty positive about the sleeping section. I said that was the best, mostly because songs like uh, Breathe Underwater and The Opposite of Us were such emotional and just beautiful songs to listen to. Yeah, I was... think I like the waking section the most with Over Matter and Lamina. Mm -hmm. Those are just really interesting songs, like I think I said it over matter would be the one that most bands would end the album on, but really was interesting. I think it really helped. I think like because it just was so consistent. Because Lamina as well was like it could have been just a song too much, but it deserves its place on there as well. It is it, it is surprisingly a memorable song off here. I was talking about other songs like Save Your Advice, which had this real guitar build up and it sounded a lot more. Something out of a prog rock album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Organism was the one that didn't really hit you too, too well, which is a bit of a surprise. I think it was... that was actually the lead single into the album. 
the oxygen was just so good it was like yeah yeah we also talked about how oxygen is a song in which even though it does have lyrics it's quite minimalistic and it's a a really hard thing to do it was proving like it was saying all it needed to with its instruments just a heads up i'm gonna mute myself in a second while i order some breakfast unless you want it on the recording for a meme yeah keep it on it for the, for the meme let's let's go podcast needs okay. care <laughs> my fat it's ass ordering breakfast <laughs> Yes, yeah, Sally, welcome to McDonald's. What would you like? Hi, I'm at McDonald's. Ow. Do, uh, do we want to talk about Big Scary or just, uh, just hear tricks? Do both. <laughs> uh, Food uh, has uh, real flutes. Yeah, that was, that, was pretty, that was pretty sweet. I was really a uh, big fan of the jazzy okay. stuff that was going on. Like, it was really surprising at first and just, it really oh, rocked it. Like the jazz, the funk, like up and up oh, and up. Uh, hi, me. can I get a uh, large number nine meal with orange juice? A large orange juice? Yep. Anything else? Uh, can I get two extra hash browns? Okay, is that everything? Uh, that'll I'll be all. Two number okay, nines. Thirteen twenty-three. First minute, please. Thank you. All right, I have ordered. Fuck, I'm, I'm just. We, yeah, should have so done. Should have cool. done big smoke Jazz water. Punk. I have two number nines, a number nine large, a number six with extra dip, a number seven, two number forty fives, one with cheese, and a large soda. <laughs> I can't really do it in big smoke's voice. It's fine. Well, may I help you? I like Okay. Uh, yeah. You too, thank you. Anything else? I like this. this album has no filler. It's amazing. It's one of my favorites. Go listen to it. I think I did I play did I rank it higher than you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I ranked it as number six, I believe. Yeah. I, because I put Lost Dinosaurs uh above it. And the albums that I put above uh Big scary that you okay. didn't. This last time yeah, the orange juice. That's all right. You got yeah, and sticky fingers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is that my number four right now? Um, my cup of romance, Middle East, and Nutri Milk are above it. So. Honest. All right, lads, I've got my food. I don't know how high Trix has put Big Scary in his uh, ranking so far, but I assume it's somewhat high. Top ten. Yeah. So far, the highest out of you two still seems to be Middle East. Yeah, that's a good ass album. Yes. Anyway, I think now is the, right. the main wrap up from episode eight. We're not even going to bother going into rankings or uh, our favorite songs. Yeah, we kind of talked about it. It was kind of obvious. Yeah. Opposite of us, I think one anyway for like favorite song. That was the song we recommended to people, I think. Yeah. Anyway, on to today's topics. So today we yes. have three albums. I'm just I'm getting them up because I'm trying to remember. So we have the most unknown out of all of them being Plush's "Stranger to the Plain." Uh, pain. "Stranger to the Plain." Nice. I'm beautiful with this. <laughs> uh, "Stranger like... to the Dinsey Plain." <laughs> we have the emo album of all time, My Chemical Romance is the Black Parade, which uh, I remember seeing someone describe it with a treat. The uh, Everybody who does not have R.I.P. on their grave is automatically drafted into the skeleton war. That is the Black Parade. And a controversial one to go into, which I think... We're gonna go into straight away. I don't know how Trix is gonna rank it, but I know how Mr. Domino here has. I think we're gonna go with the controversy well, straight away with Sticky Fingers first, if that's uh. Oh, I bought it on vinyl. Mm. So, you've I feel like that should give you a bit of a hint. You've enjoyed it more than uh, 
than Dominic has. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I really enjoyed that album. It's well crafted. I really like just the instrumentation on it. Um, it's it's got it's, it's got a vibe to it. I can't explain. So, nothing for me, almost. The first album we're going into is Sticky Fingers' Land of Pleasure. Sticky Fingers is a Sydney-based band who formed around early early 2010s, I think like 2011 or something, pretty much when the two main members, I believe it was Patty and Dylan, were busking in Newtown and met each other. And they grew quickly to be one of uh, Australia's favourite live acts. And I'm, I'm saying this, when you see this band sober, they are amazing. And whilst there are some comments in which I try to be a real on the fence and say maybe it's others, there is no doubt right now that Sticky Fingers are back on the booze and everything is shit. Like, you will see some really bad news that just makes you think maybe they should just break up and just stop this because it's not good for anyone. Stuff like them going missing in Germany, Dylan Frost was missing for a couple of days, thankfully came back alive. That could have been bad. Yeah. They're fighting um, on, it... outside of clubs and everything with each other, actual physical fighting, all happening in the past year. And that's the least of their worries. So there was some real big controversies here. Yeah. I think we go back into the start. I want to point out, just before we go into this, I don't think there's any wrong way to look at this. I think this is a controversy in which all sides should be considered. And whilst whilst some people... Cause People are really divided on what happened here, especially in Australia. Some people do so say... That Australian uh, libel and slander laws are much different than other places. They are different, but defama- I'm going to throw out all defamation kind of laws into out of this, because I, yeah, I don't think they're relevant at the moment, just for what we're here. I mean... Anyone could be lying, anyone could not be lying. It goes back to what Trick said earlier. If you go under a massive soap, everyone's a shit cunt anyway. And there is no way of going through all these controversies and saying that Sticky Fingers are 100% pure. Because, um, no, they're obviously not. And there was quite a bit from this album that, lyric-wise, kind of foreshadows that they were going to have a lot of these problems. So, for those who aren't into speed, around the end of 2016, start of 2017, allegations from another Sydney-based singer, Thelma Plum, came after, uh, well, original allegations were of racial abuse thrown at a Aboriginal band, uh, Dispossessed, uh, by Dylan Trust. These allegations, I, I don't have any proof that they were even true and I don't have enough proof that they were false. I just know the allegations exist. I'm not going to pretend like I know if they're true or false. But they claim they, they claim some sides that he was throwing racial abuse and claim some other sides that he, he wasn't and he was trying to calm the crowd. I, it's, I don't know enough. I, you, you, everyone can research that one. And find out that it didn't cause the main controversy anyway. The main controversy came after a situation which happened in Newtown, which anyone who's been to Newtown knows that once people start to get drunk there, fights happen all the time. I have friends who work around the Newtown area. It's very common. Where allegations came of Dylan Frost uh, not only throwing sexist uh, abuse at Thelma Plum, but also threatening to physically hurt her. I haven't seen... Like, there was supposedly video evidence showing that Dylan Frost and Thelma Plum were just having a verbal fight with each other, and that was that. Again, I haven't seen any of the evidence each way. 
we are a lot of this does get based off I mean that's how most allegations get based off anyway is of one person throwing them out and you just have to choose whether to believe it or not and I'm going to try and stay on the fence with this ones because I'm too afraid to be wrong worth noting that uh, Sticky Fingers has a very vocal fan base who does not care oh yeah absolutely uh Australian music press, at least one person in Australian music press has likened them to the Trump of the Australian music scene. I, I, can, I can see that. Look, I consider myself a fan of their music. I, I genuinely do. I don't consider myself a part of that fan base. I think some people are a little bit too attached to them, like they are completely innocent, which is dumb. You hear enough story. You, you live... You live in Sydney long enough, you hear enough st- uh, stories of Dylan Frost being an asshole around Newtown. I've heard enough people while playing Counter-Strike have their own stories about Dylan Frost. It's... I, again, I have no proof to them being true, I have no proof of them being false, but that doesn't excuse that these allegations and stories still exist. There, there is one thing I'd like to say, if that's cool. Yep. Um, fuck fan bases, but it's okay to be a fan. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 I say this as someone who was a part of some very shitty fan bases, but and has been a fan of games that have very shitty fan bases, like Undertale. Oh man, I loved Undertale, but oh my god, is that fan base straight cancer? Mm. Anyway, I like Steven Universe, but oh god, fuck that fan base. From these allegations, so I wish I had a, I wish I had a source for that Trump thing, but I don't remember it right now. It was, but I was gonna say that... article, wasn't it? I'll find it. Yeah, I think it's posted a bit off in the Discord of Tricks once I go look for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, but, I'm yeah, using think... the search function. It's difficult, I think, people outside of Australia to really grasp, like, what what the, the culture of that band is. And, like, as an outsider, I don't know if I fully grasp it either. So, what really... It's, like, it's interesting. Yeah, I'm going on to the, the next part of this, which kind of whole bases that culture thing. And what really threw Sticky Fingers under the bus and what kind of really began the downfall was their first interview. They took a hiatus for around a year after the allegations came out because they kind of realized that they had an alcohol problem and they spent a whole year kind of trying to fix it before coming back as a band. And they came back and they did an interview with Tom Tilly on Triple J's Hack, in which they, they're not the best public speakers, and they did not do themselves any favours, and they used lines like, boys will be boys, and it ended up seeming like it was just an advertisement for their, uh, for their next single in their, in their world tour, which... Obviously, left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths, and understandably so. That's a pretty disastrous interview that they gave. Like listening to it, it was very interesting. Just hearing um, Tilly just kind of push them for answers, just keep pushing, pushing, pushing. Like it's, it's. I've never really heard an interviewer push that much in a music in a related thing. Silky Fingers did end up making a Facebook post, which was a lot more clearer than the interview was. It's hard to say if they truly meant everything or if it was just damage control. I mean, I'm not a member of them. But in the end, if it was just going to be damage control, the damage was just way too far gone by this point. And they are now one of the most hated bands and and most loved bands at the same time. It is a really I, I, weird situation. I posted the Donald Trump link. Mm. It's uh, the 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 writer of the Donald Trump uh, comparison is Phoebe Looms at Tone Death. Again, everyone who's listening, take all the information that you get with a grain of salt, and probably do all your own research onto this before forming an opinion. Because I, I don't I don't want to push out like I'm pushing out an opinion when it comes to these types of allegations for everyone to follow, because if I'm wrong, that's dangerous. So, if people come out of this and they say, oh, I think Sticky Fingers are absolutely terrible, that's fine, but I hope that you've 
researched and formed your formed your opinion based off that instead of what any of us say. Even if you say sticky fingers are great, I hope that you've re- researched. If you want to turn a blind eye to all of this, I mean, yeah, I don't really blame you. This is there is so much that's kind of happened, which makes this really hard to go into. And, and they have some songs which you might just want to turn a blind eye to the whole band and just listen to the music because some of these songs are great, especially off this album. And I, I'm going to say I'm probably going to take that stance because I really like the album. I, I've had to take that stance with a lot of things before. This will forever be one of my favorite Australian albums of all time. It just will be, but... When I do bring out a band like this, I do have to address that this isn't a perfect band. Yeah. Uh, Dominic, I believe you had some things that you wanted to say about the controversy. Uh, I think... I think I've said really all I can. They had a couple festival controversies where they had to pull out because of some pressure, but... Other than that, Mm. it's kind of just been... Yeah... They got sober for a bit and did a tour, and they were great. They are absolutely great sober. But apparently, when they're on the booze, they just get terrible and worse and worse, and it seems like they're back on the booze again. So, yeah. One thing I really have to say at this point is just that when you read all these articles coming out in such quick succession, you know, month after month, or, you know, yeah. sometimes it's a couple things that like a month, but like, Start to, I think you form an opinion almost by then, or just you start to have an idea of what you think of them. Like, is like you can do, you can, you can like the man. I, that, that's that's you. Okay, this is happening. That's happening. C is happening. D is happening. And you know, maybe that's not to follow at a certain point. And I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be clear. My my opinion of their music came before I did research into this incident, so I've tried to be as impartial as I can. I'm, Reading I'm it, I don't know if this is a band I really want to give my attention to outside of this podcast. I'm also going to safely it's say interesting. the album that they put out this year, that one was trash. That one will just like never be on this podcast, because... I know some, for some people go, oh, the Sticky Fingers fan base go, oh, it's such a great album. No, it's really not. It had one good song with Loose Ends, and then just, like, everything else was just... Like, they've lost all their songwriting, and they've lost all their chemistry. It's just not... Well, fans are always... Are always going to... There's something... Who thinks that? uh, Like, I'm going to give an example. Uh, There's some Pink Floyd fans... So, I'm going to let you two talk about this one, mostly, (laughs) because I, like I said before, I don't really enjoy this album. There's not a lot here for me. I like a couple songs. I like Fake a Smile and Show No Shade, just to be clear, really. But I didn't really care about. So I, I was going to let you two talk about it. Uh, before I get into this album as well, because this will be the only Sticky Fingers album that I cover throughout this podcast, because I think uh, I think it's the one of the most to talk about. And again, I don't want to give them nothing but coverage, even though I... I think the album after this, Rest Ray, Glitter in the Slums, is fantastic as well. I think it's a bit underrated. I'm really only going to be talking about this one, so... If 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 you want to give Sticky Fingers another chance, Dominic, like, with music-wise, as an album, Westway, Land of Pleasure and Westway are, like, they're, in my opinion, only two good, fully consistent albums. Uh, Caress Your Soul has a couple of great tracks, but it's not too consistent. Anyway, Dominic, what was your least favorite off this album? So I can uh, critique you for that. Laserhead. What's your least favorite off off this? Laserhead. Laserhead. Actually, you know what? I don't disagree. I don't disagree. That was the point I wanted to be over, and it was just going on too much. I wouldn't put Laserhead as my uh, least favorite, but I can understand how it is not... As favorable, it Dreamland probably should be the closer on this album, but I do like like I had it quite a bit. All right, the thing I was gonna say. 
Trix, do you want to get started up while I go start up getting some of these lyrics that I was going to go compare? Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll just talk about what I liked about the album. Uh, I will say, I think that uh, the opening Steve, track... I can't hear you. Um, the title track. Can, can, yeah, the title track, Land of Pleasure. Can you hear me? Yep. I will say, I think that was a great opener. Oh. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. So, it's just some uh, Dominic's under Dominic. tricks. Can you hear me, Dominic? Uh, Dominic, can you hear me? I hear you. Can you hear me? You can't hear tricks, can you? I might be I'm going to reconnect real no, quick. No, I can hear you fine, but... try. Yeah, try reconnecting. Oh, no, Dominic is just going to... Dominic, speak. Oh. Tricks. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, here we yeah. go. I'm so, speaking. Bit me, me there. Anyway. Yeah, so Land of Pleasure, the opener. Yeah, I will say that's like the gr- best. It's a great opening track. It sets the mood for the, the whole album, sort of. You know, kind of like this laid back, kind of like dreamy, ethereal vibe. With uh, like the synth, I want to say. Like some minor synth. I could I could be m- misremembering, but I I really enjoyed the opening track and um, one of the songs I wanted to make a mention of was Rum Rage. Oh, and, that's um, gonna be one of the ones that I was actually. So we'll talk about that one together actually because there's a lot in that song yeah, that I was gonna talk about as well. I, I, there's only only really one thing I want to mention to that, and it's kind of like it's. It reminds me a lot of like the Red Hot Chili Peppers under the bridge. Mm. Which is like one of the only good Red Hot Chili Pepper songs, if you ask me. Scar Tissue is amazing, and don't say otherwise. Eh, I just don't like Anthony Kiedis' voice. Right, Wrong! Like, every, pretty much every uh, Red Hot Chili Pepper song can be summarized by California, 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 stolen funk bass solo. Yeah, you're not wrong. So I'll, I'll get into Rhyme Rage, who will follow on to your, some of your later, uh, some of your thoughts on this later so run rage they haven't ever talked much about the meaning behind this song so a lot of this is kind of just my my kind of take on the lyrics of here but it's a song called run rage everyone there's some theories that it is just about australia but i don't really believe that I think there is a lot more literal with the term rum rage, and I do think this is this is a song that's kind of just nothing about alcoholism, or that's how I've just taken it. The chorus is, she took her time, took my mind, but forget mine. Uh, we took our time, but she took mine. Which, to me, has always spoke about how, like, the addiction is just in taking over his life. I do feel like in this album, there are a lot of kind of subtle cries for help. Because this is a band that, even though the Dylan hasn't always been a songwriter, all of them have had problems with alcohol. It's something that this band has in common with each other. And I, there's some real lyricism in here, which is quite imaginative. Uh... The line, packing up my suitcase because I'm going far away, I'm going to a place where the credit cards don't decline on me. To me, that's like, there's so much I can take out of just those two lines. It takes that literal and metaphorical just so quickly, but so perfectly with each other. Because the place where the credit cards don't decline says to me that, one, he's spending so much on his alcohol addiction that his credit cards are addiction, so he's he's going broke. And two, that the only place that the credit cards don't decline at that point could be a heaven, which is kind of becoming a metaphor for death. At least that's just what I take Sad. out of it. Yeah. At least that's what I take out of it. I could be completely fucking wrong. I could, I could see that. 
There's uh, uh, such a mythical place where the credit cards don't decline would just be either a communist country where uh, <clears throat> you don't need credit cards or uh, death. Hmm. And there definitely are references to uh, Australia in this song. Uh, apparently, in the slide solo that they do, they actually use a VV bottle. Which, if you don't know what VB is, it's just a it's a common brand of beer in Australia called Victoria Bitter. Anyone who's about to say Fosters, go fuck yourself. No one actually. That's the, no one drinks. Fosters I'm gonna be in honest. Australia. That's the that's the only Australian beer I can think of. No one, drink. no one in Australia drinks Fosters. Except uh, Americans. Yep, I've never seen a single Australian drink a Fosters. Frosty Fosters. Uh, drink Phoebe. Drink Turi's New. We'll, we'll drink Vodka Cruises over Fosters. We'll say, I, I think... Um... We drink Goon. Just straight, straight fucking... Whatever. What's the, what's the term for Goon? It's a very alcoholic wine. <laughs> Alcohol wasn't part of it, I think, was something that would bother me, but was very much a thing. It was like, I, this is one of the things I really cannot relate to. Like, that they had like an air of like, they probably drink a bit and they probably have fun. I don't think people re- outside like, of Australia or New Zealand quite realize, or out of England would also probably realize it as well, the UK, but quite realize exactly how bad the drinking culture is here. Don't get me wrong. We like have it. we have some fun, fun games like Wheel of Goon, where you just get the goon bag onto a uh, on a clothesline and spin it, and whoever it lands on has to drink from the goon bag. And because I can tell Dominic is confused, a goon is a bag of wine. I was confused with my silence. Yes. A goon is a, a bag of wine, not unlike a box of wine here, where they just remove the box. Yeah, we just put it into a. Pretty much an aluminium foil bag. That that's literally what's inside the box of wine if you cut one open. Yeah. And uh yeah, we have quite a strong drinking culture, so it's not it's, I don't really celebrate it. I personally don't drink much. It's not like I've had any struggles with alcoholism. I surprisingly I've been personally fine when it comes to alcohol, but Obviously, that's just me, and there's still the whole other country beside me that does not do the same there. I, I know a lot about alcoholism, not because I drink myself, but because my mom struggled with it when I was growing up, and I've seen a lot of the a lot of that shit. So a lot of it did kind of hit close to home, but I will say I quite enjoyed the album. And the other song off here, which really is less subtle and is they kind of starting off trying to say that it was uh about something else but they've kind of slowly started to admit that it is about alcohol addiction is the song it's not it's definitely not subtle is like a lip loaded gun which has a chorus uh open up the oceans jump on in the masters of the coastlines beckoning and it i it's one of those ones where you really, if you really just shut your eyes and listen to the lyrics, the song imagines everything for you. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is probably, out of their whole discography, this this song is peak lyricism. Especially, It was memorable, for sure. If you go to, hopefully this shows the actual line on there where there's this whole bridge which is just it's just perfect they're standing on my hairdo to the reach is high enough for you which when you notice is turns out to actually be an acronym that whole verse for the word stranger which is pretty much how he starts to starts to see himself he kind of doesn't recognize himself anymore But 
system. That's interesting, yeah. yeah. That's definitely cool. Yeah, the lion rambling cut my front tooth, another bust-up knuckle bruise. You know, the whole idea of just fighting people, getting, like, lost, everything. It is... Quite, you know, if you spend the time to just go through this whole song, I could not go through this whole thing because we just do not have the time for that and to cover up this whole album. You will see so much references to just to being drunk. And probably probably some crazy like imagery that will make you appreciate the song a lot more. Solid. Anyway, since we should probably wrap this album album up, we'll probably go out with uh, a bunch of the other songs that are some crazy, some great highlights. Uh, originally, back when I first listened to this album, the highlights were Just For You and Gold Snafu. Gold Snafu, which I consider to be my little happy song. Because it has... That's that. song. <laughs> Again, I don't. You can compa- you compare this to Last Dinosaur, so then you compare Last Dinosaurs to Hot Flash Heat Wave. Trix, can you from this logic? Can you say you hear Hot Flash Heat Wave in this album? Uh, hell no. Exactly. A, a does not equal B, or A does not equal C in this case, I guess. If if A equals B and B equals C, then A has to equal C. So obviously you're wrong about something. I will Just fight you. Him. I will fight you, Dominic. <laughs> okay, so um, um, <clears throat> when we finally get together for whatever reason, we're going to have a fist fight between Dominic and uh, <clears throat> Ritalin over just over some songs. Mm. Well, I mean, it's not going to be really a fist fight. It's just going to be someone punching a wet bag of meat. <laughs> How is it either the greatest threat or the best self put down, depending on how you look at that? I prefer the latter, personally. Hey, Dominic, you want to talk about what made you like the songs that you actually did like? I, mean, I think with um, Think a Smile and Show No Shade, I think that was just the point of like. I don't know. I just, those songs. Out of nowhere, the songs really impressed me, and I kind of liked them. And I don't know why it was those songs from like the middle of the album. Like, oh, this is really good. I like this. I can look at my notes real quick because it's been a little bit since I've come back to this. Um, let's see. Uh, do do. Uh, Show No Shade, I really liked the instrumentation. I thought it was really cool in the opening. Um, the piano was really cool. I liked that. There was some experimentation I thought was really interesting sounding. Uh, Fake a Smile was more groovy than some of the other stuff on there. The rapping was different. Chorus in there. like uh, I think it was like a choir kind of thing that I liked. Stuff that was different that drew me to it. I don't, I don't know exactly anymore, but that was kind of the impressions that I had at the time. There's other songs on this album, like Just For You, which is a lot more drum and bass kind of style. Like There was a lot of genre influences off this album while still having a pretty consistent sound. Like, at least in my opinion, I think Tricks probably somewhat shares Yeah, it's a very consistent album, I yeah. think. If You Go is a bit more Brit, uh, Britpop, Rum Rage, which is easily the most somber song, which is mostly just guitar and vocals. I don't think there's anything else other than that. A lot of funk, I think what we call it, a wub, is the uh, sound for there. Dreamland, which is like this kind of big, kind of sh- sing-along penultimate song and then lays ahead which kind of just cruises along for six minutes I mean nothing's going to change my thoughts on this album I talked about it a lot in the Minnesota about kind of the emotional attachment that I had to it I'm not going to repeat it I 
consider this album quite high up, mostly because when I was going, also when I was going into uni, this is one of the few albums I actually had on my phone, so I'd listen to it quite a lot. Fair. Chicks, you got any uh, uh, final thoughts on this? I just gotta say, I clicked with it in my grooves. It's a good album. I bought it on vinyl. Oh, so we haven't talked about the album art. Dominic, you're gonna at least like the album art. The dude holding the little cat. That that is some great fuck. <laughs> it was it was intriguing. It reminded me of somebody that I know. I can see doing that exact thing. And he's the, kind of the a mustache. Bag, so you know, that is uh, that's mustache. Dylan Frost just holding a cat, and that's that's. That's the album art. I, I, I feel like it's... that the album art would be incomplete if you didn't have the mustache. Hmm. I can see how that's I a feel like the budget, mustache so. is the key part to it. He's got like the he's got like this real formal red shirt, jeans on. And then he's got sunglasses. He's got that like real just weird ass like it's looks like a weird ass mustache when the whole thing. He's got a bucket hat on, and then he's just holding a kitten and just tugging it. Yeah. Uh, when I first showed my uh, my girlfriend this album, uh, yeah, she was incredibly turned away, and just just she hated this out so much. I've never seen anyone more creeped out by an album art, but I love it. I, I, I love it. It's creepy. No, not at all. I, I'd like to see a better. You know what's in his glass? It looks like his legs. And the cameraman. Mm. Thanks for the cameraman. So that's gonna do it for the land of also, pleasure section, hard. I reckon. Uh, oh no, I just want to say one thing. Yep. This album is sometimes hard to search for because if you just search for Sticky Fingers, you get the Rolling Stones album. Ah, yeah. I think we ended oh. up talking about the controversy a bit more, but obviously you couldn't kind of go into this without talking about it. East yeah. and most favorite songs? Yeah, favorite is favorites is pretty much at the point is a tie between Look Up Loaded Gun and Gold Stafu. And my least favorite is probably... <sighs> probably Fake a Smile. I don't know, it's not a bad song, I like it, it's just if I had to choose. Uh, Velvet Skies is something that we didn't talk about. Uh, there's not really much to talk about, it's quite dreamy. Recommend. There's a feed on it, so it's a little bit different. Yeah, they've had a couple feature, uh, feature artists, I think literally just a couple in their whole discography. Lyle Maloney, I believe this guy's name is? Yep. And on the West Way, they've had um, the Australian rapper Remy do a uh, do a collaboration. Tricks, your uh, favorite, least favorite. Uh, favorite. Uh, uh, as much as I ripped on it for being just uh, basically under the bridge, I really I really enjoyed uh, um, <clears throat> Rum Ridge. Yeah, like if but... I had to show somebody a song off the album, I'd show them Rum Ranch. Uh, just going on to when I saw him live, because I saw him live after the controversy, uh, during that period when it was sober, and I'm telling you right now, when Rum Rage plays, you pretty much just have a, audi- like a full-on audience. Just everyone sings along to that tune. Um, speaking of seeing bands live, I might... I might splurge and go out to the West Coast and go see Petite League when they play on the West Coast. Because that just sounds wow. like a good time. That's definitely splurging. Oh, yeah. Well, I've I've wanted to go out to the West Coast for a while and do some other things. And uh, them going to out to the West Coast is generally just pushing me over the edge to go on the trip. Uh, on my uh, on my anniversary weekend with, uh, with the missus, um, I went to uh, buy tickets to local natives when they were appearing in Melbourne. Nice. It's a pretty good show. So, uh, Dominic, we've already got your favorites and least favorites, but we don't need to repeat that unless I you want to. I can go through it again. Um, my least favorite was Laserhead, because that was just the point where I wanted it to end. My favorites 
just because they really healing me songs that interested me were Fake a Smile and Show No Shade. My final thoughts before we move on to this. If you haven't heard of Sticky Fingers before this, I recommend giving the album a listen before going into the controversies. Because yeah. when you learn about controversies and stuff, it is somewhat harder to go impartial. And this is a band in which you can make your own opinion on the controversy, and I don't think you're wrong either way, unless you make something an opinion that is somehow so fucking stupid. <laughs> like, uh, I think they're just aliens anyway. They are, they are. Uh, That'll be a good one. Ethan, Ethan Frost is the Antichrist. Yeah. Frost. You know what? I think that is some people's opinions anyway, so. <laughs> like uh. I said, we've had a, um, a couple bands in Australia who have uh, had sexual assault allegations against them. Some of them underage, and they've had less articles written about them than Sticky Fingers has. Granted, Sticky those fingers those, also those, might just Sticky be Fingers one of those did also. That... Sticky Fingers did also stay together, so that probably helps. It might also just be one of those bands that people love to hate. I, look, I mean. There were some parts that I feel sorry for, but in the end, they're just. They're just other people. Dylan, Dylan Frost has always had the stories of being an asshole, and yeah, there's so many other artists out there for me to listen to that it's not going to affect me that much. Yeah, Land of Pleasure. I will always respect this album, but I don't need another one from them. I already have this one. Mm-hmm. Next Let's dive into my chemical romance. Black Parade, which was my choice because I, this is one of the things I got into this year. Just one of the bands that I checked out finally. It was like, oh, I actually really, really, really like this. When I was a young boy, a young my boy. father told me father. that I was edgy. <laughs> You know, it's an evil album. I'll just wear all black. It's a concept album. It's about a guy, the patient, dying of cancer or something, and he sees his best memory in the form of a parade, and they take him through all different kinds of stuff and life and death and all this stuff. Skeleton War. On rock opera album, I really appreciate just the production. I appreciate, like, they got Liza Minnelli for a song. And that's just amazing. Mm-hmm. The, the band's probably one of the best things to come out of New Jersey. So, uh, disco fries, D- disco. I mean, like I like I'm I'm removed from the whole you know my chemical romance heyday of like you know Gerard Way is so hot and all that stuff. He's attractive for sure. The only thing I knew him before from, from before listening to. Uh, any of my chemical romance was uh, the Dead Mouse song uh, "Professional Griefers." Yeah, like lo- like looking into their past a bit, it's like okay, yeah, they were formed post nine eleven as a kind of response to that of some sort, I guess. And like, yeah, they were produced by Rob Cavallo, who produced some Green Day shit. I can understand that. Um, this is one of those albums that was accused of promoting suicide, which is bullshit. Um, just because an album is emotional and makes you feel things and talks about death doesn't mean that it's promoting suicide. Most of the people mm-hmm. who were talking about suicide were talking about it way before they listened to this album. Like, when you think of the associated acts and what was coming out at the same time as this, you kind of just think of everything, like Panic! at the Disco, AFI, Linkin Park, Fall Out Boy, Muse, Green Day, everything. First person to do a Panic! at the Disco album gets kicked from the podcast. I guess I'll get kicked eventually. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy this album a lot. It's one of my, like I said before, it's one of my top albums so far on the podcast. I just really enjoy it. I genuinely want to hear about why you two don't enjoy it as much. It's my land of pleasure, I guess. I don't look, know. Look, I thought it was really brave of them to do a cover of Yellow right after their uh, 
lead single. I just thought it was a bit weird for them to change the name of it. What? What change it to? So I don't love you. He's... Oh, yes. See, I never listened to Coldplay, so I didn't know about that until you told me. Yeah, so what are, that's uh, one of those interesting things. As we're talking about, as we somewhat talk about songs during the week, I kind of noticed that for the song that I don't love you, that it has an incredibly similar chord progression and just structure to Coldplay's Yellow, and like you you listen to two songs, you can tell the differences. There's no problem, but. I haven't actually gotten past that. Every time I listen to the song, I just keep keep thinking of Cold Place Yellow, and I mean, I enjoy Cold Place Yellow. I, I will more. say this: uh, this album made me think of uh, a later Green Day album, uh, 20, 21st Century Breakdown. Um, and then after realizing that this came album came out first, I realized that Green Day's 21st Century Breakdown was basically a ripoff of the Black Parade. I mean, I don't hate the Black Parade at all. I mean, it's a good album. I don't it's, deny it's that. A good, it's a good album. I, I don't it's like good. it as much as everyone else does. I think it has its faults. It is... I think like, the first I, nine I, songs to... are amazing. They're perfect. Like, the first nine songs, it's the best part of the album. Like, after that, it gets it falls off a bit. But, like, yeah. I don't know. Just count where songs are, because fuck doing anything else. To Mama. After no. Mama is where it falls apart a bit. No, no, I'm, I will I'm say say, I'm I really this. enjoyed. Yeah, I'm saying it as well because I think uh, Trix and I had the same opinion of this. No, Teenagers is fucking amazing. I think Teenagers is actually the best oh, yeah. song off this album. Teenagers was great. I had that stuck in my head after one listen. Yeah, as I was talking about like a while ago, because I, I always bring this up as as my cringe album to reference to. So I hope if you choose any Panic at the Disco album, it's not Fever to Sweat Out. Well, because while that does have some actual, like, I'll admit there's some good tracks off that album, it always has that really cringe moment in which Brendan Neary just kind of talks to himself, even though he's trying to talk, it's like he's acting like he's talking to a crowd, and it just comes off as really cringy. And then, you have in Teenagers, with Gerard Ray, literally was shelved out altogether now, and then, guess what he does? He gets other people to sing along with him. You know what that does? It makes it work unless it's not cringy. It's actually funner. Who would have fucking thought? <sighs> My next point. And Teenagers is just an incredibly fun song. It is. It doesn't really fit with the album, but it is a fun song. Yeah, it's, it's like a blues rock sort of deal. It's like a it emo is, blues rock. It is a backstory story about a school shooting kind of thing, I think. <laughs> Kind of hinting at that, Probably. so it is about death in a sense. But oh it's not man, really put, <laughs> put this on up there with pumped up kicks as the uh, oh, as the the kids school shooter and pumped up kicks. Pumped up kicks. And if you look at the music video, they they have a they have a quick blurb about how violence is not the answer, and they also unlisted the music video, so you have to find it yourself to listen to it that way. So I guess uh, one of the proud things. Of it. Um, one of the things I've been trying to say about this is that I really did enjoy this album just compared to uh, Plush and um, Sticky Fingers. This one was my least favorite of the three, but I still really enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I mean, there's... I know a lot of people put out Welcome to the Black Parade to be one of the greatest emo songs of all time, and I don't think it's bad. I don't think it does deserve its place up there, especially with its kind of legacy, but... I I would only just barely have it in my top three of this album. I think Dead and Teenagers are just above it by far. Dead was great. Mama's up there too. That's a really good one. I really like How I Disappear and Sharpest Lives. Another, I, those are probably one of my two of my favorites, just because of their very guitar driven, or not guitar. They're very vocal driven. Everything else kind of just falls along with that from a lot of this album. Uh, but yeah, I just like how kind of all the songs kind of go into one another. The end and dad fit really well. This is how I disappear and Sharp as Lives take a little bit of different touch, but then they kind of they they work out themselves. They're kind of a nice duo duology thing. 
then welcome to the black parade like the big show stopper it's a title out title track it's everything do some other stuff for a while i don't love you cancer house of wolves and that's those are all still really really solid songs like really solid interesting sad simple song but it's just when you get to sleep that sleep is the song where i just fall off a bit like it's fine when you get into the actual thing there's, started off with the this audio thing recording thing about this album that i just want to point out and it's about like i don't know if everyone though would enjoy it as much if it didn't have like in 2019 if it didn't have the legacy that it did because so everyone who goes at this this is just another emo album you're not wrong this is just another emo album but it is still one of the best executed of those just another emo albums and it is well it's inspired so many artists just worldwide you can't yeah you can't deny its legacy even if you don't like the album that much this is one of the most influential albums of all time yeah, all, like, all, the, I'm sure all the new acts, was... well, all the new acts that you hear today, would have grown up on My Chemical Romance. Like I'm sure Plush took some inspiration from. Uh... Well, I was literally shared in an article that Triple J did uh, with Dominic about the legacy of uh, My Chemical Romance, because recently an artist, uh, Alex Leahy did a cover of it on their segment, like a version of Welcome to the Black Parade, which I didn't really enjoy that cover much. I thought it was just a mess of saying, but a lot of people haven't been enjoying I will that. say that that Triple J like a version shit is really cool. Like with the fucking Denzel Curry uh, uh, Bulls on Parade. That's not even the best. Hell yes. Uh, cons- the best like a version so far, like just in Hottest 100 rankings, is actually DMAs, I believe. Like their cover of sure. Yeah, but I, I will say in terms of like I'm beautiful. a bit I'm a bit of a Rage Against the Machine fan, mm. and uh, like I like some yeah. of their songs, but like uh, I, I wouldn't like pl- blast them twenty four seven. But uh, I gotta say, almost better than the than the original, like a version with Denzel Curry. Oh, no, it actually, like on that note, it, it will be interesting when the hottest one hundred happens next year to see where that places because there's. There's a room, like, there's a lot of tipping that it's going to make pretty high on the list, so. What was the last album we had that had a hidden track on it? Was it, uh, Tism? Uh, technically Taco Cat. I bet, yeah, we didn't listen to that. Yeah, because I'll have to, uh, I'll, I'll get onto that. I'll take a look, uh. Feel About Blood. Yeah, I, yeah, I think um, Tism was like the only one that actually had a hidden check. I remember it was really disappointing. It was like for me, I think it was like the worst part of the album. Uh, Blood the or, the t- or the Tism one? Tism thing. But Blood, I like Blood. I think is really interesting. I, I like it a lot. Fun, kind of I don't know, rag timey almost, just kind of old timey sing song kind of song very emo very blood very vampirific almost but it's 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 good fun hold on let's uh you know that meme where it'd be like the uh the guy with the smiling face and then like the same guy when he's got the shock face yeah i'll put middle east blood in the smiling face and my chemical romance is blood with the shock face (laughs) <laughs> yeah and what I was saying I think um, I might have said it. Uh, this is just semi related tangent do you think because uh, like listening to uh, My Chemical Romance kind of got me thinking about creepypasta especially with it being like the Halloween season uh, do you think Jack the Killer or Jeff the Killer was an incel probably you mean Jack the Ripper no Jeff the Killer oh, Jeff. The, the creepypasta guy Probably. Most of them are. Yeah. Without saying but names I'm... and giving them adver- advertisement, if you ever see the videos of um of a certain shooter who uh, described himself in such a way, everyone I, everyone who can tell like who's the actual incel shooter knows who I'm talking about. 
and I'll publish it. I'll share it with you guys, like, after the podcast is done, because I'm not going to share any names recording. I yeah, think, you I shouldn't think... give them glory at all. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not going to share the names while we're recording here. Uh, the point is, I think a lot of shooters and killers, especially in, in a lot of these ways, are probably in cells. Oh man, I, I've I've lost some brain cells reading the incels forum. I don't read it. Uh, I I read it just because you get some unintentional comedy gold out of it. You just have to dig through some shit nuggets to find. That was a great one, all right? Like, because you get them on other uh, other reddits and stuff like that, which are just making fun of them. And there was one where someone was trying to wonder why like he was only trying to act nice enough just to get a blowjob. That was it. That's all, that's all I wanted. <laughs> I mean, dude, just go to, like, any fucking strip club in this TV area. Hey, here's a thing. And there's gonna... There's gonna no, or, or even this... There's... Oh, there's a big hole cut in this, in this stall door. Anyway, um... Is it a dude? Is it a lady? I don't know. That's what's fun about it. This album will be about perfect. Teenagers is a cool song, but if you cut out that in sleep, I think this album will be about perfect. I understand that between Mama and Disenchanted, you might need a song to kind of buffer it a bit, but I don't know. I think it would work. Cut out that that song like a hole in the (laughs) stall. Get the circular saw. I just okay. One of the one of these days, I just want to go into a bathroom holding a drill and a giant hole saw, and, and then just, just see walk out of the club and thing. <laughs> then just walk out of the stall and just never come back. Well, I wouldn't drill the hole, but I'd make people think I was. No, what you do is you just go, or you, I, dr- or you I go, drill you, the you, hole, but I drill it at face level. No, you, what you do is you you go to the toilet with the power, uh, with the saw and you run the saw, but you don't cut anything with it. You just make the sounds. <laughs> you just bring in your own chunk of uh, of stall, so like shavings go on the floor too. Cut the hole in the floor. <laughs> the ceiling. Anything else to say about My Chemical Romance? Is the Black Parade? It's a good album. Really fucking great album. Um, yes, Dominic, you cut out there. Oh, I was saying, is there anything else? Anything best or worst favorites? Uh, I don't, there's nothing really much else to talk about. Um, it's a pretty commonly talked about album, but I don't have as much attachment. I mean. I didn't actually grow up listening to that much My Chemical Romance. I was never actually ever really big on them, even as it was a right. kid. So, like, even the really edgier ones at the start, like, I'm not okay. I promise I've always been quite critical of. And Black Parade has never been fully emotional uh, attachment. So I've never really grown up and fully listened to this. So it's... It's all right. I like it. I don't love it as much as everyone else does. The, I mean, the emo that I grew up listening to was brand new. And, oh, he turned, their lead singer turned out to be a pedophile, so. That's a get. Lost Profits? No, not quite as bad as Lost Profits. Yeah. I don't, you can't really compare anything to Lost Profits. Lost Profits was, it was just sickening. Oh god, that poor baby. Uh, yeah, this, yeah. I when you say something like that, it should just be a really edgy joke, but it's actual like sincerity. That's that's the fucked up part. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know the lost profits thing. I just know that it happened. I don't know the details. Oh, uh, all you need, uh, all well, you need to know is that he uh that he tried to rape a baby, and anything else that's on that list does not matter because he's already gone way too far. No, it's worse than that. Actually, yeah, it's the mother worse. let him. Yeah. And watch. He basically used his his fame to uh, seduce a mom to let him fuck her baby. Wow, yeah, that's... and that's not the only allegation. It gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. So. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> and a song of theirs was in fucking Lego Rock. Standing on their rooftops, everybody get your... I'm not even going to finish this. I can't make a joke. Oh. I, I try to make jokes You're about everything. Out. It's hard to make a joke. Run bomb songs. Yeah, so I, we'll just go into MCR back to, into there before we start going on to a, uh, a pedophile tangent. Le- a favorite song, teenagers, least favorite. Like, you know, I think I'm, I make jokes out of songs when I say, like, oh, it's just this, and it's just this. But every time I listen to I Don't Love You, I can only think of Coldplay, uh, Coldplay's Yellow, and it's actually really starting to bother me. So I'm putting I Don't Love You as my least favorite, and I'm really sorry, Dominic, please don't shoot me. Yeah. Your top worst favorite, or whatever. Favorites and least favorites. Uh, favorite teenagers. Uh, least favorite. Um, honestly, probably the opener. The end. It it does it did it didn't grab me like a, a lot of other openers. They have like the opener is one of like the an, most it, it important like tracks. On. Dead to me is the opener, and the end just feels like an intro. Yeah. Because I thought it flowed pretty well. I thought I thought the end was really just an intro and not really an opener. Kind of is, yeah. Uh, well, it's like song length, so that's why I'm counting it. Yeah, no, fair enough. Me, um, This Is How I Disappear and The Sharpest Lives are my favorites. Welcome to the Black Parade is, of course, also really, really great. Deep. Just cut it out of the album. It's a fine song when you cut out the pre-recorded part at the beginning with the guy having night terrors. Like, I get it. But it's too much, too long. Oh, you know, Mama has Liza Minnelli, so it's a really great song. It makes me want to watch Cabaret, and I've never seen Cabaret, so. And I posted my Liza Minnelli thing with the uh, George Carlin. On to the last album, Shoe Gaze. Oh, All right, now that Plush hates me, they don't like you saying the Shoe Gaze anymore. Well, as much as I said I was ripping on um, ripping on My Chemical Romance uh, for the whole I Don't Love You, Corpo Yellows. So, Tricks, I think it was very brave of you to um, do a My Bloody Valentine album this early. <laughs> I'm so, going to be honest, I haven't listened to any My Bloody Valentine. Bye. Surprised you didn't choose Loveless, but, it, you know, I'm always, always ready for a new album. This is what they sound like? Uh, so, neat review of heard my bloody Valentine, I'm guessing. Not. Nah. You too disappoint me. Yeah, uh, my bloody Valentine's Loveless, which I think that was like really early 90s, is one of the pioneers of both emo albums and shoegaze albums. Ah. Uh. And don't get me wrong, Loveless is a fantastic album. It has a lot of meme status. Like, one of my favorite, like, group page names that I've ever seen is I Get Sad Every Night and Listen to Loveless. (laughs) 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 Okay, that's fucking great. They, from the time I can tell, they they describe themselves as uh, San Francisco sob rock. Oh, that's let's let's keep that in mind. I guess I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> um, I, I, I forget how I stumbled up on this album. Probably the same way I did all of the other albums, just like randomly listening to stuff, and it just came up, and I just enjoyed it. So I listened to the whole album, and I really enjoyed it. And I own this one on vinyl too. <clears throat> I'm still um, waiting for this one to come on CD. I, I will say the vinyl is pretty cool. It's half. Uh, Half bone and half ox blood, which uh, side rant. Use fucking color names when describing vinyl. Don't use fucking bone and ox blood, okay? Use fucking off white and dark red. And rant. It's blood orange. 
I swear, if ever we release a podcast on vinyl, which I don't even know how the fuck we do that, we're, we're going to call it like Electric Slime or something, and it's just going to be neon, neon pink. Hit me with Electric Slime. Over to experience the second half of the podcast. Just on one Start side, it's just, me, it's just me and Trix, and on the other side, it's Dom, uh, Dominic, where his opinions belong. <laughs> <laughs> he hated sticky fingers. <laughs> oh, like Elliot's really cool. I really like Elliot a lot. I, I really like this album. It taught me that uh, feedback can be used in a musical way, which I honestly hadn't really heard before this album. And I know it's been done before probably thousands of times, but this is where it really spoke to me, and it's like, oh, you can just use feedback as a note. Like, it doesn't matter um, that it is feedback. It's just, you're playing a note. It's just, you're sustaining. And that just, like, made it click with me. And also, at the end, the last song, which is escaping my name right now, but the last song, Blue Room, yes, where um, it's just uh her wailing and that real like droning electric bass with like a subtle phaser on it oh man i love i love me a subtle phaser on a bass guitar like oh my god i hope you realize the first time you listen to loveless your head is just going to explode (laughs) i i swear to fuck i'll listen to i'll listen to loveless and give you my opinion on it versus plush okay Thank you. I would suggest them myself, but they're Irish, so. I mean, I Ireland... Like, what, what can I do? I mean, Ireland, Australia, what's the difference? A uh, couple thousand K. Um, Syrup's a really good song. Sleeper Cab is really fun, because it's instrumental. I would actually say Syrup's is probably yeah, my favorite from, off um... this. I love... I, I, I just love listening to it this is again an album i I compare it to love just a lot but i'm actually going to compare it in a pretty good way here where a lot of the time you can just listen to the sounds and even though the i don't i can't take much out of this lyrically because i can't really understand most of the lyrics but they worked really well with the instruments and it is quite an impressive instrumentally I will say, as out of place stuck to you is, yeah, stuck it to really you is like fits with the album. Stuck to you is like one of the few times, like stuck to you and Big Train are like the only times so you can really hear the words. Oh no, and Ortega. The one few blocks on the corner, and it won't take very long. I think someone should tell you that your shoes are getting thin. It's a fucked up situation that we somehow all got in. Like 345 for the lyrics you can hear. Like I'm walking with my eyes closed and I don't know why. It's just fun. Songs like Syrups though, like, which I couldn't, you couldn't really get too much out of it. And it is that more, you know, plus you can just shoot me. That more shoegazy sound. But. It's a very, I, um, I, very Kim Gordon-esque I, vocals. I mean, I don't think they'd shoot you if you said that they derive elements from shoegaze, which um, they obviously do. But I think just pigeonholing them in shoegaze they don't like. Look, I'm just going to go to Google right now and search up plush inspirations. And if my bloody Valentine is not on there, then I'll retract every statement I've made. Plush band. You two keep talking. I'll be a while here. Okay. Um, Interesting that this band was kind of actually kind of hard to uh, research because there's not a lot out there about them. Yeah, there isn't. I like I, I said I was going to send you my the centerfold or not the centerfold. It's not a Playboy. Uh, the um, fucking um, lyric sheet or whatever it's called. I'm, it, uh, just to interrupt. His name escapes me. Just to interrupt. You're talking about how some of the vocals are a bit Kim Gordonous. Oh, Kim Gordon esque. Well, one of the uh, influences that they actually um, talk about is Sonic Youth. Yeah. They're they're pretty shoegaze too, if I'm not mistaken. 
Uh, yeah, so I'm not the biggest Sonic Youth like, fan. I haven't gone too much into their discography. Besides pretty much their big songs. You know, cool cool, really cool, cool thing in that. Teenage Riot, obviously. Do Sonic Youth one day. We'll see. Anyway, um, yeah, I enjoyed this album a lot. I I cannot stress enough how surprised I was. And, you know, they're like Hot Flash Heat Wave. You, you don't hear about them, really. Yeah. I, I much about them. I, I like to choose artists like that because, like, I, I just stumble up across people like that. And, uh, like... Again, like I, that's, that's I I really like the indie scene for that because, like I guarantee I have records from people you guys have never heard. Like I'm not saying that in like a hipster way. Oh, but, I, like, can I, 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 just, I can guarantee you right now I have an album here in which no one else has ever heard, not just you two. Besides probably two two hundred people in Canada back in two thousand. Drop that. the name. Uh, you're not gonna find it. It's by a band called Seismic, and the album title is Portions. It's because there is no streaming. You, I don't think you can buy it. If you can, if you find a place to buy it, great. But there's no streaming of it from what I've seen. Uh, it was an incredibly limited run on CD, up to only a thousand copies, and then for some reason it was in a fucking like to find all this information. I had to go and f- I searched every name I could on the album uh, on the album art until I found someone whose social media was still active, and messaged him to find all the information. Wow. That's how hard I'm. I'm, was. I'm. I'm gonna raise you. One of the records I have is edition one of thirty. Yeah, but is a cassette that... from the nineties that no one's ever uh, heard of before? I'm sure. I'm not talking about edition. Oh yeah. But... I, that one that's one out of 30, though, can you find on streaming or on YouTube or anything? Oh, you, you can. You can. You won't be able to find us on YouTube. Guarantee right now, if I search up... Uh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Yep, nope, does not exist on YouTube. For looking up the... You be... Yep. Be the change you want to see in the world, man. <laughs> Get that DMCA take that YouTube channel. Lose the right to Dinsey Plains. Do it, man! But I, I will actually give this out. I, once I've felt like I'm b- a bit bored of Australian albums, I will give this album to YouTube to kind of just download and listen. Because it's just kind of an interesting story, but it's not the most interesting album you've ever heard. It's just a real underground Canadian album. Oh, so it's going to be a Devin Townsend piece? <laughs> I don't know how the hell... Because the copy I got is brand new. It's still from the plastic and everything. 18 years after its release. Or something like that. It must not be very good, then. In Australia. It's alright. I don't I don't think it's bad, but it it's because none of the members had any popularity. It's, a, it's an actual, true, independent release. Oh, a okay. Canadian band called the, the Leather Uppers. They're interesting. I've actually seen a Canadian band live. Twice. Oh, Canada? Uh, it's not... It's, either, it's, it's like a legit Canadian band um, that has fame. Uh, no, no, I saw Rush twice. Where is it? Text. Because I fucking love me some Rush. No, I'm actually going on to the... Because I saved... I'm a genius. I saved all of the text interview that I gave him and all the questions. So I actually have some info in here. So here we go. It cool. was a project that was self-funded. This is a Disney Waves exclusive. Yeah. It was a project that was self-funded by the band. There was no sponsor or anything. It has this really weird uh, package design, which I'll have to show you guys later, but like, it really just folded out. And they said it was to be environmentally friendly, which doesn't really make sense when you have plastic wrapping over it anyway. But it, it was the 2000s. They were trying. Give, yeah. them, give them a break. They had a small following in Ottawa, 
partly because they had been in other bands and in the Ottawa music scene, and the most of them playing that. There was some politics about it. They say he believed, well, he says they believed um, they only printed around a thousand copies of it. They're still trying to minimize production costs and everything onto it. And pretty much everything, everything was done by the band. So it is a great low cost production album. How it, I don't know how it's made its way to Australia, but it's probably been in someone's like stock to sell for a long time, and they just couldn't sell it for eighteen years until I sold it for a dollar at a fucking uh, trade. Trade me. I don't know if you if you guys heard that, but I just ripped some serious ass, and I, I'm wondering if my mic picked that up. Nope. <laughs> Damn, oh. I was. I was impressed with my... yeah, I, I put a promise. We'll, we'll, we'll give that album a proper um, coverage one day, but it won't be for a bit because I've still got a couple of albums that, in, my, in my lineup. That would be a magical mini set. I know where it is. Forever. A Dissonant Waves exclusive. Just making sure I know where it is. Sir. I'm just like fucked up badly. It's somewhere. You can keep talking. So Do you think we can get copyright check? We just put the whole album into the into the recording. By who? Uh, well, I, I, they had no label. I, I think if we, yeah, if we and if we messed with the band and asked them, hey, we're basically going to give you some free publicity. Can we use your songs? They'd probably be like, yeah, sure. We haven't thought about this in twenty years. The band does not exist anymore. They only actually put out the one album, but. Uh, the guy did mention that some of them are in another band that he knows of. It's called, like, The True Man Show. It's alright, it's just punk. But they haven't really released much themselves the last time I checked. But, yeah, none of them... None of them are still in that band. That band is pretty much deformed. So now we must take up the mantle of the band. Yeah, it's probably best to do it as a mini sorry, honestly. What's their name? Seismic. I'm trying to see where I put this album because it's a hard, hard one to find because it's somewhat of a fit. There it is. And they have stuff like they thank Safford Beeblebrox from fucking Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, hell yeah. I love Hitchhiker's Guide. It's like my favorite book. Like, no lie. Like, my senior quote was a fucking Douglas Adams quote. Where's the, where's the thanks? Seismic thanks everyone who com- comes out to support us, Bronwyn Agnew and Yvesa Neron from services for services above the Call of Duty, Carol Farley, Ferris Wheeler, Mary Kate and Jacob Tutu, Steph Perlman, Perman, Brian and Cafe Decouf, Jim Garfield, Matt Meisner, Dan Robertalli, Mark Charon, Eugene and Saffold uh Bibliobrox. Tokyo Records Spherical Productions. Damn. And it literally starts off with this 10, like 15 second intro, which it goes, isn't it funny how you can find all these signs that say exits? Exits. And that has to go down as one of the most pretentious starts to an album I have ever heard in my life. <laughs> okay, we, we need to do like just a... F- Damn, we need to obsess over this album. Is or uh, at this point, we we need to do this. We need to do this album. Though, just there's, just, some, there's some interesting parts, and I, I just want to say, if one of these people just happens to stumble across this, because I think they're all still alive, you've done some good things with this album. And I, even though I just criticized that part, please don't kill me. <laughs> anyway, we the album that we champion forever for no reason. Yeah. The plush, we'll just al- the plush album was good. Our number one. That's my rating of it. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. It was a really consistent album. album. It was an album. I, I, I will, I will listen to my bloody Valentine's love, love list and get back to you. I will replace the BTS update. Yes. B. Update. Although I'll actually listen to that on like BTS, because I'm gonna be honest, I got a sour taste in my mouth listening to BTS. I can't explain it. Yeah, I didn't like BTS either. 
anyway, my most favorite songs on Strangers of the Pain are Elliot and Sleeper Cab. My least favorite song, I don't know. I don't have a reason because it was a really good album. Yeah, yeah. my favorites are probably Syrup and Big Train. Uh, Stuck to You is all right, but that's probably probably my least favorite. Yeah, it is the most form breaking. Mm. It, it does it remind you of any song off of My Bloody Valentine's Loveless? Nah, that one doesn't. I mean, you'll notice a, quite a lot of differences between this album and Loveless. I mean, it's Loveless might be in, uh, like a general defining album, but comparing Coldplay yeah. and Michael. Anyway, I think it's pretty obvious, but my placements for the albums this week are number three, Sticky Fingers, number two, Plush, and number one, My Chemical Romance. I'll let Trix go last because his is uh, there. Sorry, I forget to use my pronouns correctly. Fucking kill me. I'm bad at everything. My placements are number three is My Chemical Romance because I just enjoyed the Plush album a little bit more. And obviously, Sticky Fingers is number one. Uh, for me, uh, number one, I'm going to start at number three, obviously. Uh, My Chemical Romance. I really enjoyed it, but uh, I, I just like Flush and Sticky Fingers that much better. Um, like, I, 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 I will listen. I'll, I'll obviously listen to the album again. I quite enjoyed it. But... Um, when it came down to it, I the bass on Sticky Fingers and Plush inspired me to want to pick up my bass and learn their bass lines more than uh, the My Chemical Romance did. And that's what overall made me put, put it last. Number two for me is Plush. Uh, because, uh, and that, and a, a good reason for that is uh, I, I don't like putting my albums first. But and I, I honestly, but I, I really honestly did enjoy. <laughs> I, I I really did enjoy Sticky Fingers, uh, and I would put, I, like. I, I'm not gonna listen to it more than I would Plush, but uh, I, I'm going to listen to listen to it a lot. And they're both good albums, and it's a hard, And the only reason that Plush is number two is because I. Ch- I mean, the plush album was, was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be coming into this. But, I mean, obviously it's still a bit of a blowout. If we look at my rankings for them, I believe I put plush at number... Uh, so you're going to have to open this at Notepad++, which actually has numbering. I put plush as number 13 out of 28 so far. Obviously that's about to go to a bit over 30. Yeah. Compared to Sticky Fingers, which I have as number two, I don't know how high you would put Sticky Fingers there. I I would right. overall put Plush higher than Sticky Fingers, just for the like emotional impact it has on me. But of this week, I enjoyed Sticky Fingers more. All right, so one song. If you could boil this episode down to one song everyone should listen to, what is it? Choose from all six albums. One, two, three. Teenagers. Either teenagers or rum rage. That's God's effort for me. I'm so sorry. Like again, maybe it's the emotional. It's not well. It's not just the emotional impact it has on me. It's by far the most accessible song on Land of Pleasure. First instinct is to say Elliot, but I also have to give it up for Welcome to the Black Parade. So I guess choose either one. But so we didn't, talk, we didn't to... talk about it and just in line of pleasure. It's that whole in God's Staffery where you had the whole chorus of everybody going in and singing la 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 la. Yeah. And I don't care if you find that cheesy, it's fun as fuck. Oh. Next week. Everybody? It's a spooky Halloween special. 
Yeah, it's our Halloween special, and all of our albums are kind of vaguely Halloween themed. We'll featuring, get more into it. Uh, featuring your favorite guests, Tricks Music, Mr. Domino. We're, we're going to have to come up with spooky names for all of us. Riddlin for Riddlin. Riddlin at Riddlin. Rit Atlin. Rit Atlin for Rit Atlin. Love Rit Atlin. He's a cool guy. Mm. Okay. I'll go first, just to keep this going. I'm doing something different again. I'm breaking the format. I'm cheating again. Mm. I'm going to do two EPs. They're both by the band AFI. That's right. Fire Get your angst on, boys. Get your angst on. No, this is not really angst. This is more just punk. This is like horror gothic punk. I'll get your Tony Hawks on. Oh, fucking man. You got Fire Inside EP, and you got All Hollows EP. Interesting they enough. Came in just want to point out is that uh, the uh, Fire Inside EP is not on Spotify, so I'm going to have to YouTube that one. Oh, I think it's on Spotify in America. Interesting. About that? Yeah, Let me know sure. if you have trouble finding it. Ah, uh, it's not on Spotify Australia, but that's fine. I can I'll look for it a bit later. Anyway, continue. They're both pretty short. I know we had a rule early on, like maybe don't mention anything that's put in Tony Hawk, but fuck it. Uh how All Hallows EP has Boy You Destroyed the World, which is one of the best songs. Remember when Remember when Remember when we were all so beautiful. <laughs> I'll see that as sad at all. But and as you, as you sing that and crying, you realize you missed a grind, which would cause the uh, foreman to sink into the pool, and you just ran out of time, and you have to start yeah. to run again. Um, but yeah, uh, that's gonna be some funny piece. We're gonna talk about AFI again in a couple months anyway, so it's good to have these impressions first. I think just to understand what they were when they were at their best. I will say that uh, whilst I joke about like emo racks and joke a bit about AFI, AFI is one of those few kind of like angst. Like they have a lot of their songs do have quite a bit of angst with them, even if they are well crafted. They are one of those few ones that I did listen to a lot growing up, so I do actually have some emotional attachment with AFI. I have none, so this will be interesting. I'm going to talk to you about Davy Havoc's book. Well, the first book he wrote, at least. <laughs> uh, I actually haven't listened to any of their early EPs, so this will be somewhat new. Yeah. Go on. I had decided to go with the biggest stretch in music history <laughs> by calling this the Frankenstein's monster of albums. In which grabbing as much as possible to make something completely different. The only difference is, is that this has not made something absolutely horrific that everybody wants to kill. I have chosen the album that is nothing but samples and has gone down as one of the biggest albums in Australian music history. It is, of course, the Avalanches Since I Left You. Your boys are just, just gonna have the lad side part of this are gonna have either so much fun or a lot of complaining from me. Alright. We'll say uh all Hallows EP, very clearly Halloween based, very spooky. That's why I'm picking it. Go on, Tricks. Mine isn't very Halloween themed at all, I'm gonna say that right now. Uh, I, I I came up with the idea of a Halloween thing, but I was waffling around between um, like going with a surf goth album. And recently I found something that would have been better, but I'm going to stick with my thing. I was going to go with a the Bombora's album, which they are spooky surf music. Like one of their, their albums are called like Danger Island, uh, Organ Grinder, but I'm not doing that. I'm doing, um, I am cheating harder than Dominic right now, and I'm doing two songs that (laughs) add up to 30 minutes. No. I'm I'm choosing the song uh, Cygnus X1, book one, uh, by, and book two, Hemispheres, by, 
uh, they're the end and beginning of A Farewell to King and uh, Hemispheres, respectively. And uh, they tell a pretty good story. Imagine cheating in your own podcast. Hey, it's our podcast. We make the rules. So that's the, C- the Cygnus X1. Yeah. One and book two. Yeah. Book one, book two. No book three. Interestingly, they did release an EP of those songs separately. For, I think you said it was for yeah, like Day? 40 years uh, afterwards. Yeah, and you can get it on vinyl, which I'm going to buy. Well, if they've just got an EP of those, then we can just surely just do the EP, can't we? Uh, yeah, but it's only like the EP. You, the EP you can't get. You can't stream. Uh... So it's, it's like only an EP if you buy the record. If that makes sense. Well, surely, surely we can just consider it an EP. We can consider it an EP, but it's two songs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, just we're, we're comparing an EP. I'll... It's um, two songs that are the length of a punk album. Yeah. I'm just going to write seeing this book as an EP on my notes here. Because that way, if they're supposed to flow together, that makes it a bit different. And sorry, sorry, Dominic, to do the cheat here. Makes it different from the Aiden Alexander's. It's fine. That's why I picked two EPs this time, because I want them both to count. That's all right. That's, um, when I get into Mallrat, that's probably going to be doing both of her EPs. So. Anyway, uh, I just want to point out that I said that this episode is going to go a while if we were doing a Sticky Fingers one. Granted, we did start off having to recap a lost episode, but still, we are up to one hour, 51 minutes, and hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 30 seconds. <laughs> and with that, I think that's going to be the episode for this week. I have been Rinalyn. You can catch me at rinalynforkids.github.io. I don't have any contact information on there. So, you know, if you want to leave me a message, just fuck off. I don't really give enough shits. You can just comment on this on this video and... and complain at me I'll, I'll i'll fight back on my on my main account we'll we'll have a flame war no one will win but that's usually the case you can also catch me on my youtube channel which will be linked down in the description because i'm not going to put all those random character strings into into words i can't even remember Just the Google first one plans. yeah dinsey planes it's the greatest project of all time it is i am dominic you can find me on Twitter at D A C I C H O C K I, where I post um, things that I write on Tilting Windmill Studios dot com and other places, and where I also complain about being sick. Also, I mean, it's like Windmill Studios, like I said. About it. Um, be sure to follow our Twitter at Distant Waves. We're also on YouTube, as you clearly know if you're listening to this. So please subscribe. Yes. Leave us. Leave us rude and nasty. Uh, I'm, I've been tricks. You can catch me at procrastinaut underscore on Twitter. That's like procrastinating astronaut. And, uh, I'm also going to finally set up my YouTube channel. I know I've been saying that for days, but I actually have like a project I'm working on. I got, I won a contest that another YouTuber was putting out where he gave away this absolute garbage base. And I'm going to be doing like a, a small YouTube channels where I'm basically restoring it and uh, fixing it up and making it playable. Awesome. So if you're interested in Luthier, Luthieri or whatever it's called at all, let me know. And you can just follow me. And yeah, that with does that, it for us. Yeah, if that uh, wraps up Rick, we don't have a crag to tell the fuck off anymore because... Uh, OBS is our new overlord, so, uh... Hold on, hold on. Have a great week. Catch you later. Bye, buddy. Bye, Craig!